Hi, my name is Jasmine and in today's video, I'm going to share with you about the Montefiore Windmill in Jerusalem located in Yemen Moshe neighborhood. It's a historic neighborhood in Jerusalem, Israel overlooking the old city. History Yemen Moshe was established in 1892 to 1894 by the Montefiore Welfare Fund located outside Jerusalem's old city. It was conceived as a solution to the overcrowding and unsanitary conditions inside the walls. The fund was continuing the work done by British Jewish banker Moses Montefiore and the new project was meant to mark the seventh year after the philanthropist's death. The name commemorates Montefiore's first name and the verse from the book of Isaiah 63:11-12. The land was bought in 1855 by Montefiore with money from the estate of Judah Toro and came to be known as Kere Moshe Vehudit, Moses and Judith Vineyard after Montefiore and his wife. Montefiore left an indelible mark on the Jerusalem landscape by building in 1857 the windmill in what later became the Yemen Moshe neighborhood. The windmill became operational in 1860. The idea behind it was winning the residents from their reliance on the halukha or charity. Montefiore believed that a mill could provide them with a source of livelihood but it was only operative for approximately 19 years. The first housing project, Mishkinocha name, consisted of two rows of buildings. Its first houses were completely by uh, 1860 and contained 28 apartments of one and a half rooms. The compound also had a winter cistern with an iron pump imported from England, a mikveh and a communal oven. Few people were prepared to live there at the time due to its location outside the city walls in an area open to Bedouin marauders. Only the poor took up to the offer despite the more hygienic and relatively spacious flats. And the foundation even resorted to paying people in order to persuade them. A wall was built around the houses and the access gate was locked at night. The second row of houses of Mishkinocha Anim, Sha'ananim, was built in 1866 when a cholera epidemic was at its height in the old city. Some people had taken up residence in the new neighborhood during daytime hours but had so far refused to stay there at night. However, now they fully moved in as illness provide to be a greater menace than night robbers. Yamin Moshe neighborhood was built in 1892 to 1894 on the remaining lands around Mishkino Chalanim. Joseph Sebag Montefiore's Moses Montefiore's nep nephew signed an agreement which allowed for the construction project on the Kerem Moshe Vehudit land. Other facilities and projects, in addition to the windmill, which was built to allow poor Jews to grind their own flour, Montefiore built a printing press and textile factory and helped to finance several agricultural colonies. He also attempted to acquire arable land for Jewish cultivation but was hampered by Ottoman restrictions on land sales to non-Muslims. Today, Yemen Moshe is now an upscale neighborhood surrounded by gardens with a panoramic view of the old city walls. The Mishkinot name buildings were turned into a cultural center and guest house for writers, intellectuals, and musicians. Today, Yemen Moshe and Mishkinot Hinot Shananim, its later outgrowth, remain aesthetically much the same as they were at the turn of the century. But the neighborhood's population has changed from the poor and pious former residents of the old city to one of Jerusalem's wealthiest groups. 
with a significant percentage of foreign owners who keep residences in Yemen Moshe as holiday camps. The neighborhood thus often takes on a marked emptiness during the off-season, which can actually make strolling through its greenery and gardens more pleasant. In addition to its verdancy and its stunning views of the old city, Yemen Moshe is home to a modest museum chronicling the exploits of Moses Montefiore and a couple of high-quality dining establishments. Yemen Moshe is a beautiful neighborhood with the charm of a French village coupled with magnificent views of the old city of Jerusalem. Small wonder that although there isn't too much to do in the suburb, people come from far and wide just to walk its quaint alleyways and admire the views.